How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the GPD win. So I'm going to review the GPD win and I'll try to be quick with it because there are some things I want to talk about, but the video gets long and I want to keep it short. So without further ado, let's get into it. So this is the GPD win. For those of you who don't know what it is, it's basically a tiny little laptop that has a 5.5 inch 720p display. And um, it's basically a laptop, except it's so small that it's uh, kind of called a palm top so it's meant to be held in your palm of your hands and you use it like this and uh, you can kind of play games and stuff that's why it has the controller over here so quickly taking a look around it once you open it up obviously uh, you got the 5.5 uh, inch 720p display it's ips and it has really good viewing angles I and mean, you should be able to see it the colors don't shift and all uh, obviously i need to bump up the brightness over here so i'll just go ahead and do that so as you can see the colors don't really shift much um so there's that, that's nice. Um, now down here you got the Xbox 360 controller. Believe it or not, this is a proper Xbox 360 controller. And uh, at the back you has the bumpers and triggers uh, for both of them. And then you also have the full size keyboard, which in my opinion is a little meh, but um, we'll get onto that in a bit. Now let's go ahead and close this down. Now at the back you got the main in IO, so you got USB-C for charging. You got HDMI out, which is a type C. So in other words, it's a mini HDMI, not micro or not the full size one. You got a micro SD card slot, a full size USB 3 port and a headphone jack for audio out. Now this USB 3 port, if I can zoom in over here, I'll show you it. Now, as you can see, this USB 3 port is right up against the uh, hinge, the display hinge. Basically, if you want to get a device in there, you have to like tilt it open and shove it in. And sometimes I have been having problems with devices going in. Um, also, if the USB thumbstick that you're using or something like that is too big, it's gonna kind of bend the whole thing. So because it's when it's opened up or something, it, this doesn't change, uh, but uh, it kind of hits the display thing at the back and it kind of bends that. Um, and I don't, I don't like that. But so, but so far uh, it's been alright, no problem. Now also at the back down here, you've got a, a fan controller, and basically. Uh, the cooler is over here so i'll talk about the cooler right now so the outtake is over here so that's where the air comes out so when you're holding it like that um the air is going to come out the bottom so if you're laying down and you're playing like this with the belly uh, on your belly it's going to block it so don't do that the intake is at the bottom now i'm not sure what this is um it seems to be a second intake but from what i've felt or whatever there's no air going in if, even if there is it's very little this is mainly the intake so because the cpu cooler is here cooling the cpu and the outtake is there um but that's basically it um now if you turn the fan on this is off now let's go ahead and zoom quickly do some um, noise test so this is off um and it's basically silent but i think if you put it up against your ear you do hear the battery um that's being juiced out so it's kind of making that coily whine noise which is silent again it's really really quiet you don't need to worry about it let's go ahead and turn the fan on to uh, slow speed and uh, this is basically what it sounds like um it is on but uh, i'll put it up against the microphone over here so hopefully you can see that i mean hear that um but basically it's quiet it really 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 is quiet and i like that um, but if you turn it into full speed um, it turns into a jet engine and i think it's unnecessary for even a device like this i hold it to the microphone whatever i'm gonna turn it off um because the cpu inside this uh, let's go over the specs real quick so um it's running intel atom x7 z8750 quad core cpu which is a, a cherry tail cpu and it goes up to 2.56 gigahertz it's quad core it's got 64 bits of windows and it's also got 64 gigabytes of emmc storage so if i jump into here um there we are so it's already filled up because i've got a few games loaded in it, but i'm not sure what else i've got loaded in it um but it's basically only got uh, 64 gigs of storage so if you're gonna plan on getting a lot of games on this uh you might want to shove a sd card in there now the cpu uh, i was going to talk about the temperatures on the CPU, uh, these CPUs are made to withhold about 75 degrees Celsius and this thing under load, uh, playing Minecraft or some games like that, it doesn't really go above 70 um, and that's with either the fan off uh, and if you turn the fan on to slow speed, it only goes down by 2 degrees which is alright, I mean not, not bad you know, but I think it's unnecessary to use it on full speed because first off it's really really loud Second of all, the CPU can withstand the temperature, so it's kind of designed to run at that kind of temperatures, those highest temperatures. And three, it actually doesn't 
make much of a difference in cooling and um, the only difference it is going to make is the battery life is going to de uh, demolish that um, because it does juice uh, take a lot of the battery and so if you have the fan off and you're doing random stuff like you know messing around web browser and stuff like that then you don't need the uh, fan on and that will save a lot of battery life and i'll get onto the battery life uh, later on now let's go on to i'm just going to quickly jump into this going to go load up steam and i want to show you something so if you're new if you're new to pc gaming which um, i'm not but i don't really play a lot of pc games the thing is um we, the xbox 360 controller and there's a uh, there's a, like a switch here you can disable the whole thing so this is like disabled it's not there now you can go into mouse mode which you can use this as the mouse other thing i uh, don't know where that is or there is so you can hopefully see that there moving um and then the this is scroll up and down with like the mouse wheel thing uh, go ahead and close this um jump onto library you'll see what i mean by i don't play a lot of games um and then this these in, so this is in mouse mode and these buttons here are up down left and right arrows and this d part is the wsd so if you want to play games with mouse mode and the some games don't support the uh, controller so you can do that and it should map it and work like that so you can move around with this and the back over here now these bumpers and triggers both of them are just one in mouse mode so the left trigger and the bumper they both just one click and the left, right trigger and bumper they both the second click uh, so the right and the left click now here's the thing so the, for the games that don't support the xbox 360 controller mode what you want to do is go on to steam and if you don't play steam games which is a bit stupid and stuff um and in getting this um, but if you don't play steam games it's still fine you don't have to buy any game what you need to do is go over here go down to add a game i'll kind of zoom in over here so you can see this better now some games don't really support this steam controller mode and trust me you want to use that because um using in mouse mode is a little annoying uh, in games uh, because when you're using the d-pad these two buttons the bumper and triggers they both disable they don't work well, you can only use them one at a time so you go ahead and click on add game add a non-steam game and uh, you basically select the game that you've got over here so uh, i'll say minecraft or whatever where is it gone I think I've already added it so it's not over here but basically you select the game you click uh, add uh, selected programs and basically they'll pop up over here so I've got test time unlimited I've got minecraft and quick 3 and then what you do is um, it's not in focus is it oh, Christ um, you go into view and then you go into big picture mode and then you switch the to the Xbox controller mode and I'll zoom back out because it's annoying to use like this but basically what this is gonna do is I'll turn the speaker up a little bit. Okay, so now it's basically like a console, um, your PS4 or whatever. Move around with this, you go into your library <clears throat> and you go into um, games and uh, all the games are here. Uh, I haven't downloaded that. Where's it going? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, so basically you select a game, let's say Minecraft. I want to play this game or CSGO or whatever. Uh, now as you can see it has a keyboard icon and uh, it says tick that means it works with the keyboard this terraria uh, works with uh, mouse, the controller natively so you don't have to do all of this you just turn on the game and it should work with the xbox 360 controller but we're actually not this game um, so as you can see it's a little bit laggy and stuff uh, i'll go ahead and jump onto quick 3 and what you can do is click manage shortcut and then go on to controller options and you, you click this, you move this to forced on. Um, if you can't read that, it doesn't matter, but just follow along. And then what you can do is go on controller configuration and map the whole Xbox 360 controller to all the keyboard. And um, in this mod, everything is separate. So these two are completely independent and they work just like a real xbox controller so you while you're moving around or whatever you can actually press those and they'll work perfectly fine now i've mapped these controls you can do all sort of stuff so i've mapped the right stick to uh, move the mouse around and um, so that'll just uh, change the view of where i'm wherever i'm looking and i've only uh, i've done test drive unlimited i've mapped this properly and so i can kind of show you this and we're going to jump into this game so if you want to enable the controls you have to jump uh, into the game from here so you can't really go into the desktop and jump into the game that you want to play you have to jump into it from here so anyways let's go ahead and do that we're gonna have to uh, click press and it'll open up um and this game i've been playing a little bit i've got it in the lowest settings and uh, i think the cpu is the bottleneck 
you know the gpu the gpu has a lot of headroom on here well quite a bit i guess and um, you can use this now with controller and this is the controller controller mode it's not the mouse mode so and i can control this because i mapped it and i'll map this to uh, right click or something and i can play games like this now uh, and you can use the keyboard at the same time so in minecraft games like minecraft which you need to type in in the inventory and stuff hopefully yeah the controller map um, because there was one time i loaded this up and um, there you go uh, there was one time i loaded this game up and um, it just w wasn't working properly so i had to just re restart the game so to close the game down load it back up and um, then it worked so basically this is it now the only thing i don't like about this is the um this game i guess is the only one if you play in um full screen 720p or whatever or for 540p um then uh, it is a lot laggy but i'm gonna turn this off right now uh, because i want to show you some tips that i want I, I, i've kind of figured out so there's one tip basically if you don't get the controller to work get steam and then map the controls through big picture mode so uh, just wait for it to go off hopefully it's not crashed or something um so i'm just gonna go off this uh, uh quit big picture mode and i'm gonna jump back into controller mode now right so you li right click and this is the second step uh, second tip and what i'm going to show you now is do how to add the 540p custom resolution thing and so that way if you, you can change the resolution in a game to get better fps because some games um, don't really have that option they just go down to 800 by 600 or something and then 720p uh, that's what test Run limited did so right click um, and you want to add this custom resolution you go into display properties and uh, from here wait for this to load up because we all know this takes a while for some weird reason and the gpd wind does get a little bit warm um but don't worry uh, it's not gonna die out on you uh, and i want to turn the brightness down because the battery level uh, okay whatever and then you go into display and then from here hopefully when this loads up you go into custom resolutions yes and uh, these two are switched around so you want to put this thing down um, 544 960 and then 60 here and then you click add and they should add it over here so this is the 960 544 960 thing um if you can't read that but basically this means uh, um, this means if you go into the games and you go into the options in the games um just like test Unlimited, tribal limited um, and some games still don't really show that resolution up uh, like csgo i don't think it does let's talk about um the battery life because i got this um refurbished and stuff uh and um but this is the same thing with a brand new one so if you look over here i'll go ahead and zoom in now this is an application or software called battery care you can also get hardware monitor the same kind of thing okay so hopefully you can read that now basically um this kind of shows the information on the battery and so what it's showing is the design capacity which is basically the actual size of the battery that is supposed to be um and that should be 6700 uh, milliwatts an hour and then the total capacity is um a little bit low because i actually restarted this again once and it's kind of it's kind of changed it uh back to this uh, but basically when i got this out of the box this uh design total capacity was double the amount of designed capacity so and it's not meant to be like that and basically uh, it was like thirteen thousand milliwatts an hour or something on this bit here and uh, basically that means your battery is messed up you need to calibrate the whole thing again and that basically means you have to drain the whole battery quickly uh not quickly uh, just kill it completely just kill it um and then charge the whole thing without interruption to full again and then you can see over here that this and the wear, when i got this out of the box the wear level uh was on zero and now it's gone to two after i've done the calibration stuff um and then uh, the current capacity is basically the charge level how much it's got and now here's the funny thing um this is at four volts whoa that's a bit funny um now this battery is a 3.8 volts rated at 3.8 volts so compared to your typical batteries that you find in an everyday smartphone or whatever this is 0.1 volts above so they're all 3.7 volts this is 3.8 and this is the original battery that's why it says intel c intel v here that's the actual model name or whatever of the battery can't keep it in focus um but basically uh when i got this out of the box and this was on like thirteen thousand milliwatts an hour and stuff the system just shut down 
at about 40% of battery. And they did that every time. And I got annoyed and stuff and worried and kind of contacted the seller and everything. And I started panicking a little bit because I didn't want that to happen. And it's not meant to happen. So what I did was um, drain the whole battery, followed this thingy here, but calibre battery. I'll just open this up and you can probably read this for yourself. Um, okay, yep, loading it up. Okay, so um, yeah, just go ahead and pause the video here, kind of screenshot it or whatever. And then just read that. Um, basically, that's all you need to do to kind of calibrate the whole thing again. Um, and that's with this application and you can download the battery care application just to kind of see your battery life and stuff So I do recommend that um, But basically you have to restart the whole thing and stuff like that and then the wear level after I finished all that it went up to 16% and this uh, uh, Current capacity. I mean total capacity was like on 5,500 and that basically means I've killed about 16% of the whole life of the battery and that's never recoverable but apparently it's gone up to 2% wear level and this thing has gone up to something something like that now um, Now also just one thing you want to know about the battery is that The time that it shows how much is left that's always wrong and this is showing three hours. This is showing nine hours um, Sorry about that. I'll just kind of show they are um, three hours and then Nine hours um, this is always wrong because the battery is at 3.8 volts not 3.7 or something so it kind of um, messes up the whole thing and it doesn't really give you the right results um, and this is all because the battery on the GPD win has no protection circuit and so that basically means if you overcharge and stuff like that it's gonna get messed up and also on top of that the battery life is only like three hours of gaming and I don't recommend I don't like that and it takes guess how long it takes to charge you won't believe this 10 whole hours to charge the whole battery and then it only lasts like six, three hours uh, with uh, medium use um, but for you to well actually talking about the CPU is a lot more impressive compared to the other Atom CPUs that I've used this one um, you can actually, it feels a lot more like a proper CPU rather than a mobile CPU so that's very very impressive I'll just jump into CSGO we want to jump into it from big picture mode now what am I doing uh, go on to this Xbox 360 mod for the GPU it's running Intel HD graphics 405, which uh, obviously is beyond mobile or something. I don't know uh, Go into this and now this game does say that the controller is supported But uh, when I went on to it, it just didn't really work. So I've mapped it myself and uh, Let's go ahead and jump onto this uh, and this is on the lowest graphics now CSGO doesn't really uh, uh, Work really well on this. Um, I think the, the CPU again is the bottleneck I get about 20 FPS without having more without doing any modifications. So if you can find the config file, you can kind of disable the shadows and stuff like that. Um, but I haven't really been able to find it. And it, I actually did find it, I think, but when I went into it, there's no option to turn off the shadows and stuff. It's just other weird stuff that have nothing to do with the actual game. Um, but more like how the bots work and stuff like that. Let's go ahead and uh, see what we can do though. Uh, so basically in Minecraft, I was playing in controller mode all the time until I, figured out that uh, i mean until i found out that you know uh, which one have a map update to okay uh let's go on to offline with bots just for the just for a demonstration and this mouse is a lot faster because the sensitivity is like that we'll have to wait for this to load um but in minecraft i was only able to move with the wasd you come up this in mouse mode to controls it's always the scroll scroll up and down wheel so you can use this to change between the icons and the tool toolbar so that's good but other than that you can't really map this to anything um so i was having a little bit of problem i wanted to get i got this for mainly minecraft um, but the problem is uh, controlling it like this is a little awkward and stuff so it's not nice um, but now with this I can map it like this and it's proper like a console and then I've got this uh, keyboard down here So I can do uh, use this for entering in some items in the inventory and stuff like that So it's nice. This keyboard isn't the best I've used. Um, I've be, uh, I'm, I'm obviously used to a Blackberry I use that as my daily driver and this is nowhere near that. I don't the pro the size is not the problem I'm fine with that. It's the shape of the keys. It's, it's really really bad is this shape that they've chosen um as you can see from this side over here, uh, if that is in focus, there we go. 
basically like uh, bumps and um, the problem is they're all the same and you can't really tell which key is which without having to look at it and it's also not backlit so if you don't have um uh, if it's not in a well lit room or something you're not going to be able to type because it's impossible uh, trust me i've tried that um so let's go ahead and um, wait for this and then jump into the game i'm going to turn the fan on which does drain the battery a lot faster mind you uh, but it's still this this is still silent no problem um so there we go uh, 20 fps no problem uh, let's just jump into the match oh, i should have enabled uh, msi afterburner but basically uh, you, you don't really need oh wait, i should actually get some uh so basically it's like 20 fps i think it's all right where is my oh okay gear where's my bloody arrow gone where's the mouse cursor gone there it is. <laughs> Lol. Okay, whatever. Let's just chip. I'm just mess the whole thing up, anyways. Um, okay. Uh, you can play this game, but the problem is it's 20 FPS. Um, and on top of that, the response time is um. I mean, I can't really play this and say that it's really, really playable. It's really hard to aim with obviously the controller. Christ, man, just fucking kill him already. Lol, 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 lol. <laughs> um, but you can't play this game, but that's the thing. I mean, I can't really can't even aim don't even think about playing this game and on top of that the response time as well as the frame rate is really really low and the response time is actually more important than the frame rate because it's basically called a lag so basically when you do something it, take, it has a lot of delay on how when it happens and stuff um, on minecraft however which is a lighter game uh, the cpu again is the bottleneck because the render distance i think is on eight chunks and i'll go into that right now <clears throat> minecraft and um the CPU is the bottleneck on Minecraft, but the thing is, um, it works 60 FPS on native resolution, so that's 720p. Um, oh my god, it's downloading a thing again. Um, whatever, we have to wait for it. Okay, so here it is, and it's working. Go ahead and uh, I have got Optifine on, but I haven't really messed around with the the graphics and everything, so don't really worry about that. I've left it on everything high in terms of graphics animations everything full i've got the render distance uh, up to eight chunks which is lower than 16 um, which is what i think this game normally starts on and um, the fancy graphics and the lights and everything they're all at maximum um, and it just works fine so you can see the battery life uh, level down there um, is, it goes down really really fast and there have been times where it just isn't really calculate it properly so when you want to see the actual battery life and stuff is um you have to press the battery icon and that refreshes the whole thing and then it shows the actual battery level now you might be wondering why i've got the resolution down i just want to kind of focus over here because it's a lot more easier for me to play um now you have to wait for the world to load in properly otherwise you know Okay, so 60 FPS continues, uh, but you have to wait for the world to load in. After it's loaded in, it works really, really well. Don't worry, I've mapped all this with the uh, Steam controller thing. So uh, I'll just go ahead and press this button here and we'll jump into that. Options. This. Uh, so I've got this on full. The render distance is on 8 and I've locked that to 60, but basically uh, frame rate is not a problem in minecraft i'll tell you that much i've got this on bright because the display seems like it is uh, the shadows are really crushed up and the white balance is off to the blue side so it's not really standard white it's a little bit bluish now you can enable the shaders believe you or not um, everything else is on um, pretty much normal uh, and i've got this one to 400p or 640 400 because it helps a little bit with the it doesn't really make any difference in performance at all um other than I'm, I'm just kind of giving it a little bit of headroom so it has a breathing room so it can you know when it's uh kind of choking or something uh with having the resolution down it kind of helps with the um, 
not even not getting into the point where it starts lagging already but as you can see the when the world loads in and stuff but obviously when you're you know building or something like that there's no problem it's going to be constant 60 as it is right now it just jumps down to 50s and uh, if you play in 720p i think it hovers around 45s um, but even then it's really really nice i've just got into this because i kind of prefer it like this uh, it seems a little more smoother and the, uh, the response time is a lot lower um, and that's what I think I like about this um, but if you enable shaders no problem it, it actually uh, at this resolution and I'm not sure about 720p I doubt that it's gonna work properly at that but the thing is you can enable shaders on this and this is portable uh, and now this is not, not all the shaders work so all the seal shaders and stuff like that they're all they're all not good options uh, you want to uh, I've actually mapped the disk thingy, this D-pad to go up and down and so it kind of shuffles the toolbar. Um, now you want to use these shaders, SFLP shaders lead or light version and these are basically shaders for very very low end systems and the only reason these shaders work really well is because they don't have shadows. Now shadows in games or anywhere in whatever, whichever game you play, if you have shadows just like Test Tribal Limited. Um, it's going to be really really laggy but this once it loads the world in again um it should jump up to like 50s or something and even if it doesn't the, the frame rate is well above playable uh so i think it's all right uh, but you don't really want shades i mean it looks nice we all know that but we're gonna go on for this uh, minecraft works perfectly after you've obviously mapped it through the steam controller thing um now what i want to show you is just some test time limited gameplay um i'm not gonna do terraria terraria works perfectly in 800 by 600 if you go on 720 uh, with the large worlds and everything it doesn't really like to be playing around what is this is this oh, yeah okay so we're gonna play this game now now i don't have a lot of games but you can mod uh, pretty much uh, most of the games out there on the pc gaming market to work really well uh, with low end specs like this thing um and that works really well uh, this game is really old game and it still hovers around 30s this and then when you get into something heavy uh then they kind of just uh, and i think it's the cpu is the bottleneck i've been playing all these games with after, uh, msi afterburner and that's how i know that um so uh, let me just get into the conclusion while I play this game and the speaker is mono uh, but for YouTube I've actually you can actually watch YouTube on this it's fine in Chrome um, there's very little lag in making it go full screen the response time response time is uh, fine compared to the older Atom processor that I've used and I've showed um, this one is a lot better than that uh, all of those I mean um, so it's more usable uh, I think watching YouTube videos is perfectly fine the only problem I really have with GPD Win is the battery. Now it doesn't have a protection circuit, so it's kind of messed up. Uh, basically, means you're gonna have to keep it maintained and you're gonna have to keep look after it. Um, every device that's coming out nowadays, even every, well, every phone, especially every phone, you know, they all have a battery protection. Basically, means if it's uh, full, finished charging, it's gonna stop cut off the circuit, so it uh, stops charging. Otherwise, it overcharges and stuff. Um, and a lot of things like that um this thing doesn't have that so when you do leave your charge overnight it's going to overcharge the whole thing mess up the calibration and stuff like that and all of a sudden the system just kind of tends to show off all of a sudden uh in the middle of whatever you're doing it just instantly just cuts off and stuff like that and uh, it just kind of wears the battery out um and on top of that well that may not be the problem after you fixed it like i've done i saw right now it's still kind of messes itself up again and again here and there but the thing is um oops i'm looking at the uh, screen on the camera um but the thing is is the battery life that is the problem um to me personally well having to charge this for 10 hours or eight hours is not really ideal it's you know when i want to play games or something i don't want to like wait for it to hold charge again and then on top of that the charging is well when you're playing heavy games with the fan on it only lasts like one hour so that is not worth it um the body life is just completely not good at all so i, I personally think it just doesn't i don't really recommend this just for that reason you have to charge it for one whole day and you don't leave it charge overnight because you're gonna forget that it's finished charging and the funny thing is because it doesn't have a protection circuit you have to sit down and wait for it to fully charge otherwise it's gonna mess up the whole thing uh, with the calibration and stuff like that and you're gonna 
kill the battery, you're gonna wear the whole thing out. So at one point, it's just not even gonna work anymore if you keep doing that. Um, so you have to keep an eye on the charging um, and stuff like that, and it's just really annoying. And because of all of, uh, all of this, there's also been some other problems like um, Windows messing up the recognition between charging and the battery. So if you leave it on charge, I mean, if you're using it while charging, which, by the way, it doesn't charge while you're using it, it actually just slows down the decrease rate. Um, so there's that, you can't really charge it and play at the same time. Um, but it kind of messes up the whole thing and uh, Windows tries to, it, tr it tries to kind of see uh, what the actual uh, battery is and it kind of gets confused so it thinks the power source, the wall adapter where you're charging it from is the actual battery. So when you take it off, it's gonna shoot the system off and stuff like that and uh, there's just a lot of problems with the GPD win. A lot of people have uh, come out and said that kind of stuff on uh, Reddit and all that kind of stuff. Um, basically, it, it's just uh, annoying to use. And so therefore, I don't recommend it. The GPD win 2, however, has got a Core M processor, which I'm really interested in, but I don't, I, I, I can't, I'm kind of hesitant to buy it because of this. I'm not sure they've fixed the problems with that. Uh, they have got this uh, quick charge thingy on it, which uh, apparently only works with one type of quick charge, unless, uh, and otherwise the battery doesn't even charge. So charging the battery is a problem with GPD win 2. You have to get a certain charger, the certain way to charge and stuff. It doesn't work off a USB wall adapter kind of thing that you charge with your phone with. It's 10 volts or something with quick charge. Uh, and it doesn't work with Qualcomm's quick charge either. So there's that, it just doesn't charge. Um, so there's a problem with GPD win 2 as well, not just one, the two. So um, unfortunately, at this, at this time right now, the devices like these, don't really work properly on for uh, I've just have to say I mean I'm I'm not gonna sit here and say oh yeah the problems uh, you know they're, they're, they're there but I mean you, you can definitely get it. if you want PC gaming on the mobile stuff on, on the go there you here you here you can have it but I'm not gonna say that because it's just not worth it because of all the problems I'll be honest with you all the time I've had this which has been two or three weeks now um, I've been dealing with more problems than actually having fun and playing games with it so uh yeah i uh, don't really think that's worth it for anything uh it's not, um, i don't know what to say honestly <laughs> it's just it is what it is so um anyways uh i think I'll, it's time to stop now because uh, the camera is running out of battery so i'm sorry about that um been long enough <coughs> it is warm now so it's about 60 65 degrees or something um i can't tell kind of uh we're gonna have to kind of go off this um basically uh unfortunately for you i don't really recommend this because it, it, the battery has a lot of problems and trust me if you're thinking i'm saying a bad thing and just kind of ignore me um so it's already gone down to 67 percent as well like five five ten minutes of gaming or whatever maybe lower than that but it's going down to 67 from 73 and yeah definitely it's gonna die pretty soon uh, so this is the battery care app application you can get this and it shows you this but it shows you the discharge rate so there's a um yeah pretty much so all the games really work uh, quake 3 is 60 fps constant minecraft obviously after it's loaded in properly 60 fps constant sim city 4 deluxe um is also constant you have to kind of change the settings to make it go full screen and use it in windows windowed mode otherwise it kind of just messes up the thing uh, terraria one how funny thing is with terraria even though it's a low gpu game it actually suffers a lot from frame drops at 720p so you have to like kind of drop it down to 800 by 600 or something then it's at 30s um for some weird reason, it's just like that, but it works. Tesla Limited, I've got everything on low and it works fine. So there's an application called Keysticks and it basically allows you to map the 360 controller with the keyboard, which is what you mainly need. And that actually, that actually has a monthly subscription and I don't recommend getting that. Um, because uh, later on, I found out the Steam would allow you to kind of map the controls to the thingy. So that works that way. Um, as, I, as I said, I don't have a lot of games. The PSP emulator, oh, I forgot to talk about emulators, CSGO 20 FPS. Emulators, PSP 10 FPS, 5 FPS, something like that. With, I've been messing around with the settings. I was gonna, gonna show you this, but uh, I think it's been long enough. I wanna end the video. Um, the PSP emulator is no good. It's uh, just too much for it. 
Uh, I'm pretty sure the N64 and all the others are fine, but the PSP is a star choke in the whole system. Again, I think it's the CPU and um, pretty much I, I think that's that's basically the nutshell of this. So I guess I'll leave it here. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below and stuff like that. Um, I will see you again in another video, hopefully. And um, yeah, this is the GPD win. Uh, unfortunately, I don't recommend it because it had a lot more problems. Um, but if you have a different opinion, let me know in the comment section below. We can start an argument.